Trying to pull Evans to his feet. Two little handbags at three or four paces going on there. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Yellow card for Frio. And one for Schalke. Oh no, a red card for... Well, Kelly Schalke is off. Second bookable offence, and Khalid Schalke gets Kart Jeune, followed by Kart Rouge. So, Torquay United down to ten. And there are still some 50 minutes of this game to be played. Craig Taylor. Now Wayne O'Sullivan. Finding Bez Weatherick. Going towards the far post, too high for Northmore. Adams doing a good job. Uh, Hill with the clearance. Straight to Steve Adams. Martin Phillips looking to deliver the cross. Came off Russell. Nicky Evans getting it forward. In Stonebridge. Stonebridge has scored. Well, they were queuing up. And you got the feeling that a goal had to come. And it came in the end from Ian Stonebridge. Well, Torquay will look at themselves and think they perhaps had opportunities to get the ball away they didn't take them and Ian Stonebridge having been given the opportunity picked his spot his 10th goal of the season and it's all square in the Devon Derby Craig Taylor talking with just about everyone back behind the ball and Sullivan trying to find space to turn get away from Reese. now uh, Steve Adams Stonebridge trying to get hold of it on the box. It's come for Kevin Wills. Oh, it's gone in off Kevin Wills. And Torquay will be cursing their luck then. Uh, perhaps a little bit of a fortuitous touch then for Kevin Wills. His first goal for Argyle. And what an important one that could prove to be. Not just for Argyle, but for Torquay's hopes of avoiding the drop as well. well certainly there seemed to be an element of fortune about the way it went in off Kevin Wills. Torquay hit by two goals in the space of three minutes. Phillips. Kevin Wills. Now Phillips once more. Can you get around Paul Holmes? Phillips doing well, got the cross in, Stonebridge, oh, pure class. Well, there could be no arguments about that one. Martin Phillips, the engineer, and Ian Stonebridge, the executioner. Well, it was Martin Phillips who set it up with that lovely little run down the left. He found space to get the cross in. And Stonebridge arriving late, but the header was precision itself. Nothing that Ryan Northmore could do about it. Phillips again. Chip the cross in, it's come for Michael Evans. Evans had time to ring the ball down, but the bounce wasn't quite what he wanted from it. Just couldn't place the shot on target. Watton's header forward, Evans in pursuit, Northmore always missed out, completely missed his kick, this is Evans, Gritton on the far post, Martin Gritton with the chance, uh, couldn't quite get it under control, Gritton, and the shot in the end, drifting wide, Martin Gritton just missing out, and the chance to finish it in style. Well, I'm disappointed with the result, yeah, I mean, the turning point in the game was obvious to everyone really I felt we we were fairly much in control of the game up until the sending off and uh, you know, that's cost us dearly you know we we found it very difficult to play uh, with the nine players outfield players we, we needed the result today after we put in two performances that have been way below standard in the Saturday and Monday up at um, Kidderminster so we needed to cup, uh, get a little bit of pride back and uh, we did today you know, but games are running out, you know, and uh, we need to get another victory very quickly. And, you know, I think that it's good that we are playing on Tuesday evening. 
uh, if we had to wait till next Saturday, perhaps that's too long, you know. Obviously a great disappointment for Torquay, and I suppose as your Devon neighbours, you're going to have a little bit of sympathy for them. Yeah, obviously, I mean, I don't know what the situation is in regarding the other results, but at the end of the day, we're only here to try and make our team better and, and progress so we're somewhere closer come the end of the season, so we can give it a bash next year. I look at on Saturday and finishing up at home to Lincoln. Another big week ahead for Torquay. The Tuesday night action at Playmore features Darlington and they entertain York on Saturday. Well, four games left for Argyle. They also have a rearranged Tuesday fixture, South End. Plymouth Argyle drew three all against South End. Torquay United have lifted themselves off the bottom of the table with a win against Darlington. Martin Dean's been at Plainmore. Yes, Torquay United still clinging to their Football League lifeline. They moved off the bottom of the third division table with a dramatic 2-1 victory over Darlington here at Plainmore. It always promised to be a tense night and Torquay fans must have feared the worst when Olivier Bernard gave Darlington the lead 10 minutes into the second half. But Torquay were back on level terms within five minutes. Tony Beddoe's initial effort was saved, but substitute Gareth Law followed up to force home the loose ball. Then came the dramatic finale as Torquay threw everyone forward. John Gale getting the vital touch to secure a precious three points just two minutes from time. There was plenty of drama too at home. Torquay United 2, Darlington 1. Martin Dean at Plainmore for West Country News. Fans as high as at the very bottom of the Football League, where a few teams are still fighting for nationwide survival. Gabriel Clark went to Plainmore this week to feel the tension firsthand. Mike Bateson is Torquay United owner. Well done! In 10 years, he's invested £1.4 million for the odd glass of wine and the sanity of Basil Fawlty. Go on, run him down! Well, don't then. Torquay's had a league club for 75 years. In a town that really comes alive when the season's over, this is as sporty as many get. Starting on Tuesday, United had three games to save themselves. I'm searching for God. Now, uh, I've, I've been an atheist all my life, but I'm, I'm leaning towards the church now. It seems to be the only hope of salvation. My name is George Sava, and I've been a Turkey United supporter for 41 years. You know, if you're out of the league, it's like you are nobody. To me, when you're in the league, you are somebody. You belong to the football. We're one of the better clubs in the third division, uh, poorly supported, but we've got a fairly tidy little ground we're financially secure we don't have any bent contracts um, we just get on with the business and work within the rules i'm bob buckley hotel owner torquay fan it brings revenue for example you've got the away supporters they won't just come down for the one night they'll come down for the weekend which generates money which helps businesses torquay know how to survive in 1987, a dog ran onto the pitch and bit one of their players, delaying the final game. In added time, Torquay scored to stay up. They did finish bottom five years ago, but escaped because Stevenage's ground didn't measure up. Acting manager Colin Lee is now in charge of the escape mission. There's only one way, and that's, that's upwards. Well, you could go down. No, it's not a consideration. We don't even think about that sort of thing. I haven't even made any inquiries about the conference. I don't know where Lee RMI is, and I don't want to. I'm Mark Faulkner. I'm a local taxi driver and been supporting Torquay for 23 years. I think it was plain to see quite early in the season if we did get into a struggle, some of the players that were brought in didn't have the stomach for it. I am uh, on Valium. I'm having three injections a day of assorted drugs from the, uh, the doctor. And I still don't feel any better. It's, uh, it's really getting to me. He's stressed out right now. So am I. We've been in it four times before, and you wonder how many more times it's got to happen before something serious, you know, goes wrong. All day, I'm on edge like this. I can't wait to be up there. I can't wait, you know, to see the ball two, three times in the net and come in the restaurant happy. I would normally have a few wines before the match started, but um, I want to see what's going on. I want to take it in properly and uh, really get every nuance of the, uh, of the situation. You'll get drunk so, at the end of the season, then? Uh, I shall get drunk at the end of the night. Torquay had to start well against Darlington. They weren't bad. They were rubbish. Oh, my God. 
fucking interview. Go! Go now! Oh, Every time I get in it. The half-time cup have failed to do its job. Even worse, the game kicked off again. Yeah. Come on, it's gone quiet! I do not believe it. Well, well, bloody well. On came Torquay's sub, 18-year-old Gareth Law. Shoot! Wait for it, Mike. That's good, that's good. Let's go! Yes! Well done! 20 minutes and 10 fags later, they were into injury time. Come on, Gailey! Put the bloody keeper in the net as well. Torquay were no longer the 92nd club in the Football League. Torquay till I die! Torquay till I die! We're not going out of the league. We're going to stay up. The next year, we're going to challenge for the Championship next year. Yes. George, yes. Yeah. yes! I actually got uh, fairly excited about it. Are you off the Valium now? Yes, I'm on the Viagra now. <laughs> and it, it's working. How the other half live, hey? <laughs> How fantastic was that? It looks I'm like believing. somebody might be staying up, even if the team go down for a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, I love it, love it. Less of that dirty talk for now. Now, they all play each other down there. It's so tight, couldn't be tighter. And it all leads to an incredible crescendo, perhaps, on the final day for uh, Torquay and Barnet. Well, when you see, you see the quality of the people down there, how much they love it and how, how important it is to me, it's an absolute disaster that it, any one of the teams will be relegated. Obviously, Halifax have got games to play in Iowa, Paul, Paul, Bracewell. But it's it's all it's Torquay York today, and it's it's all gonna it's gonna bubble along right till the end. It's amazing. I know which team we're all gonna be following for the next week. But it's uh, worth mentioning as well, though, that Chesterfield's punishment hasn't been sorted out quite yet. Uh, all the rest of the teams in that league are looking for them to be punished more severely than nine points, and mm. they could even be thrown out, which which means a reprieve effectively, doesn't it? It does. So it's it's, it's all to all to play for, and certainly the, the final game for Torquay next week at Barnet. Both right down there's going to be a, a real nervy one. Now we know why they all look so happy down in that part of the world. <laughs> well happy. <laughs> well, there's plenty of excitement in store for the last couple of weeks. Hello we? and welcome to the West Country match. We're into the last week of the season and it couldn't be more tense in the battle for Football League survival. A handful of clubs still involved in the struggle to stay up and another big game tonight. That Lincoln-Halifax result from Sinsor Bank has a major bearing on the relegation stakes. And there's the reason why. The foot of Division 3 looking like this tonight. Exeter safe, but Torquay still very much embroiled in the scramble to avoid the drop into the nationwide conference. Well, at least their fate is in their own hands. The Gulls go into their final match of the season at Barnet on Saturday, knowing a point will be good enough to keep them up, whatever happens elsewhere. While United fans facing another nail-biting 90 minutes then, their nerves still in shreds after the weekend draw with York City at Plainmore. The coolest customer at the ground, Martin Dean. Well, after 73 years, could this be the last league game to be played here at Plainmore? Talk United, of course, have been this way before. They'll be comforted by the fact that salvation is still in their own hands, although for it to remain that way, they need at least a point from this afternoon's game against York City and to win their final match at Barnet. Richardson That's deflected away another corner Richardson will take it Coming towards the near post this time oh and it's going to go in too Basham has got the touch well it was Mark Bauer who was there at the far post to head it back across goal and Mike Basham, the central defender, on hand to pounce for his first goal for York City. And bad news, obviously, for Torquay United. It's all down inside ten minutes. Also caught by Reese. then. The flag is up. Referee saying play on. In possession. No good with the shot. 
to see Ryan Northmore then. And as confidently as it might have been. Basham, Brass, that must have been handball, surely. Well, the referee indicating that he felt the ball had bounced up against the hand. And I think it is going to be a free kick right on the edge of the box. Beddo for Reese. Back for Beddo. Oh, the space was neatly worked. The shot, though, poorly executed. It's a little move that they would have worked on on the training ground. The initial part of it went right. Certainly, Tony Beddo was in a little bit of space on the edge of the area. Keep the ball down, though. Green finding Reese. Now Beddo. Green going just outside him. Wasn't a great ball. Inside for Cal. Now Beddo. Chance for him to drive a shot in. Came off Basham. Now Edmondson with the header away into touch. It's towards Jason Reese. It'll come for Beddo. Back towards Reese once more. Chance for him to get a cross in here. Fettis stretching for it. Just got a touch to it though. And it was an important touch. Torquay will be heartened by that. Cross in towards Beddo. Got the little flick on. Oh, Gareth Law had lost his footing. Just didn't know what was happening for a moment. Tommy Beddo then getting in ahead of the goalkeeper. Paul Holmes. Too high for Law. Headed away by Potter. Green. Kell is to his right. Green going for the return ball. Comes in instead for Law. Good first time effort. Fortunate for him, it was straight at Alan Pettis. Gareth Law opting to take it first time. One of those where if luck favours you, it nestles in the back of the net. When it doesn't, it goes straight at the goalkeeper. Now Holmes. Cal. Forward for Schalke. And space to turn. Can he get a shot in here, perhaps? Well, he did. It was charged down, though, by Mark Bauer. Ryan Green. I agree. Gale looking for it on the far post. Comes in towards Beddo. Goalkeeper is there. Beddo has got the touch. Well, Beddo and Kevin Hill both claiming it, I think. But I think it was Tony Beddo who got the final touch. Well, the cross curled in towards Hill and Beddo. Fettis came for it. Didn't quite make it. And I think it was Beddo who got the touch for his eighth goal of the season. This is Ryan Green coming forward. Kell on the far post. Gale in the middle as well. Green curling it. Oh, good save from Alan Fettis. Well, that could so easily have been two in the space of a minute. Khalid Schalke. Back for Jason Reese. Plenty of talky men in the box. Aimed in towards Beddo on the far side. Off the post. And hooked away by Chris Brass. So close to a second for Tony Beddo. He sends a second, perhaps. Jason Reese. Agri with a flick on. It's in there. Jimmy Agri. Just five minutes left, and Jimmy Agri, who's become such a favourite here at Plainmore, gets a goal which might yet be crucial in keeping Torquay United in Division Three with the throw Basham got the first goal turning the cross in came off Agri and that will be a corner Graham Potter with the corner Northmore well he flapped at it and the ball has gone in straight from the corner the second half the lads did everything everything to win this football match and to, to get a sucker punch at the end there was, was something hard to swallow but uh, you know, I've tried to, to tell them that we've we've actually got another chance. You know, we've got another chance against Barnet next week. You know, we need at least a point up there, and uh, we'll go there well prepared. We'll go there knowing what we've got to do. And uh, 
every single player and every single person at this football club will give it his best shot and uh, if that's good enough then you know, it'll be fantastic. All eyes on Underhill this Saturday then, but Exeter can afford to relax a little in their final fixture at home to Lincoln. They're already safe thanks to a surprise 2-0 win at Scunthorpe. It was no up. An agonising Saturday afternoon in store for Torquay United supporters making the trip to Barnet. And Mark Tyler is already there with tonight's roundup. Good evening to you from Underhill. Yes, in less than 24 hours, this ground will have seen enough emotion to last a lifetime. Barnet and Torquay go head to head, with United needing just a point to extend their 73 year stay in the Football League. This will be no place for the faint hearted. Supporters are used to the roller coaster ride that is Torquay United. Millionaire businessman Mike Bateson took over shortly after Bryn the Police Dog saved the club from relegation in the late 80s. Since then, United have punctuated three Wembley finals with regular battles to avoid the drop. But the Torquay owner has lost none of his passion for the game. Like all the fans, he's spent the week contemplating what defeat at Barnet would mean. It's nothing to do with the finance at the moment. It's purely the, the, the honour of the club, the dignity. Um, we need to stay in the Football League. We don't want to even contemplate going into the conference, even though I suppose we're going to be second favourites on Saturday, but uh, I don't view it that way. George Sava and his 10-year-old son, George Jr., will be among the 2,000 travelling supporters at Barnet. They're quite simply talky mad, and customers at the family restaurant are left in no doubt about their allegiances and tomorrow's results. I know, true in my heart, we're going to win. That's my feeling. I know it's not easy, it's 50-50 chance, you know, a draw is good for us, but they play home. They're going to fight as well for survival, but we, we're not going to defend, we're going to go for it. And I, I'm pretty sure we're going to stay up. Oh, I think they'll win 2 or 3 nil. I don't think they'll go down, but if Barnett score first, they're going to have to attack a lot and play, no defending, just everyone attacking. Torquay's immediate future lies in the hands of caretaker boss Colin Lee. Despite needing just a point, he's promised an attacking display at Underhill. And if United succeed, it won't only be the Savers and Mike Bateson that are celebrating. And the Torquay fans will watch the game from these seats behind the goal at the lower end of the ground. If you're not coming to the game, the first highlights for you at 10 past five tomorrow, along with home games for... The chips have arrived and they're raring to go. We'll have more on this in just a moment, but first let's have a look at some of the other sport that's on offer this weekend. Torquay United's league future will be decided tomorrow. They must avoid defeat at Barnet to stay in the third division. Otherwise, it's the conference for them. Talking about taking it to the wire... Dave Gibbons reports. Torquay are used to gripping last chapters. Twice before they've been in precarious positions but survived. This time the maths couldn't be simpler. Torquay have to win or draw to stay in the league. Barnett have to beat the goals to preserve their status. Nerves are in shreds. Um, insides feel like a, a jelly. It's, uh, but outwardly, of course, there's a calm exterior. Fairly laid back, but not too laid back. Um, but inside, yeah, butterflies, sparrows, hawks, God knows what inside. Although Colin Lee has done his best since taking over, in a temporary capacity, since West Saunders sacking, he didn't expect a finale like this. You know, when I came, it looked, uh, it looked a very difficult job, I must admit, because the goal difference was, was very poor. Um, they were conceding a lot of goals, you know, an average of about three to four goals per game. And obviously we had to try and do something about that uh, very quickly. In 1987, a stray dog actually saved Torquay from relegation. It wandered onto the pitch at Plainmore, bit a player's leg, and that meant stoppage time in which Torquay scored the winner to stay up. Five years ago, they won a high court battle against Stevenage Borough, who claimed their ground was ready in time to take their place in the Football League at the expense of the goals. We wonder if they'll earn a last minute reprieve this time. Hello and welcome to the West Country match, the final weekend of the season and for Torquay United, arguably the most important game in their history. 14 years ago, Bryn the police dog helped save them from the drop. This time, the equation is simple. They need a point here at Underhill against Barnet to keep them in Division 3. 
With Barnet needing a win to stay up, the atmosphere around the ground, nothing short of electric. Not for the faint-hearted, this one. Torquay fans have experienced many highs and lows over the years, and around 1,500 made the journey here to North London. Travelling with some of them, our reporter Trina Lake. It's 7.30 on Saturday morning and we're here at Torquay Coach Station. Hundreds of fans here ready to make the trip to watch United meet their football Please. league destiny. You are on this one. Excellent. You could almost cut the tension with a knife as the faithful made their pilgrimage to the capital, ready for 90 minutes of pure torture. The game against Barnet probably one to be endured, not enjoyed. I haven't slept this week, really. <laughs> I've just been too nervous, really. Yeah, the tension's been unbearable, work's been bad. I've got a great belief that we're going to do it. Um, it's, we've been in this situation many times before, and, you know, I think it's, it's a case of now working hard on it, you know. So, uh, up the goals, that's what I say. <laughs> An awful feeling. Just, it's, it's just not like anything I've ever known. It's, I've been I've been to Torquay loads of times, but like a cup final, if you lose it, there's life in there. If you lose this, it doesn't bear thinking about it. I really can't even imagine what I'm going to feel like. Agony, frustration. Makes you wonder what it's all about, and it's the end of 43 years of supporting. No way, we're staying up. Staying up, staying up, staying up, staying up, staying up, staying up, staying up. <laughs> Outside the ground, it was a colourful scene, and the fans had found their voice. Come on! The people of Barnet were getting the message loud and clear. So plenty of Torquay fans packed into Underhill for this survival showdown. High time we joined our match commentator, Martin Dean. Now, what is it they say about the football season being a marathon, not a sprint? Well, after nine months and 45 grueling games, it all comes down to a 90-minute spurt this afternoon, in which only one of these two teams can survive. Barnett's staying power has been called into serious question in recent weeks. One win and six defeats in the last eight late games has left them staring into the abyss. That manager John Still sticks with a tried and tested formula. The recall of goalkeeper Lee Harrison is the only change to the side which lost to Blackpool last Saturday. The players with the right pedigree could be vital in this charged atmosphere. Darren Curry certainly falls into that category. He's the nephew of former England star Tony Carey. And despite Barnett's struggles, He's just been named by his fellow professionals in the third division team of the season. Well, who'd be a goalkeeper on a day like this? 23-year-old Stuart Jones gets his first start for four months after shaking off a hamstring injury. He edges out Ryan Northmore after making his comeback in the Devon St Luke's bowl victory over Plymouth Argyle in midweek. That's one of three changes from the side which drew with York last Saturday. And it's Schalke is suspended. But the good news for Torquay is that Epi and Williams and David Graham have both been passed fit. They'll play up front with Tony Fedo dropping back into midfield. Well, this is only the 16th league meeting between these two sides, and Barnet have much the better record. It took Torquay 13 attempts before they finally managed to register a win. It was here at Underhill last season. They've since gone on to win at Plainmore. Early drama, Lee Harrison getting a knock from Effie and Williams, who has an early chance. And striking it just wide, but it was all about an injury to Lee Harrison then, who was uh, knocked over in that initial clash with Effie and Williams. Well, Effie and Williams must have thought he had the early chance. There's the initial incident with Harrison going down, and then Lee Flynn making a bit of a hash of the clearance. David Graham got in there, and then Williams' is shot just well, drifted well wide in the end. Harrison coming off, and he'll be replaced by Danny Naisbitt. Turned towards Kevin Hill, got up well for the header. Away by Mark Arbour. Danny Brown looking to get it forward. Green will turn it back in towards David Graham. And Arbour was up though. Now Pedo. Need to find space to turn. Flynn eventually with the clearance. Agree underneath it. No challenge this time from Richards. Of 
attention there for Colin Lee. Jason Ritz. Running Ryan Green. One ball aimed towards David Graham. Almost brought it down in his stride. Stockley keeping with him. Header away from Heald. Now Goodhine giving it to Reese. And Jason Reese has scored! Wow, what a finish from Jason Reese and what a start for Torquay United. Well, those fans celebrate and well they might. Danny Naismith has only been on the field for eight minutes. He's beaten by that effort from Jason Reese. It was good.